Aloha, everyone. This is our Hawaiian Volcano Summary for August 1st, 2024. It's been about a week since the intrusion on Kilauea's Upper East Rift ended. However, earthquakes over the past week have continued at lower rates at the margins of that intrusion. So to remind you, this is a satellite image of where the intrusion occurred in the middle of last week, focused here in the area around Mauna Ulu Crater, next to Palahi Crater as well, right along this turn on a, in the rift zone right there. The earthquake rates since then have dropped off. So you see over the last week, earthquake rates have been fairly low, although they have been clustered in those areas that we just showed. The tilt meters that we see at the summit, this is a sand hill tilt meter, one of these lines points more towards the main caldera and one towards the south caldera, where we've seen recent magma movement to the southwest rift. Both of these signals began reinflating shortly after the earthquakes slow down on the upper east rift. So that suggests that the pathway of magma from the summit to the upper east rift was disrupted at the end of that event there. However, as, we, as we've showed, there have been earthquakes still ongoing at the margins, and this is away from the center of, act of intrusion right through here. So perhaps what's happening is we're seeing settling of this magma body no longer being fed from the summit. That part ended at the end of last week, but the volume of magma that's still intruded in here could be redistributing itself just to spread out more along the opening that it's encountered. And that would be one possible explanation for seeing earthquakes at either end of that intrusion area. However, all the sites on the Middle East Rift and south of there are showing massive ground movements. I'll point out this is the Makai Makaupui station as one example. This is a two-year plot with three components. This top one is east-west, north-south, and the bottom one is up and down. So in summary, what we're seeing over this two-year plot, really that our data is within this very last sliver of you know, the right side of the graph here. We're seeing the upwards component shooting up at a massive, massive rate. We're seeing the north-south component shooting to the south at a massive rate. Faster at first, slower, the points are closer together, but still ongoing as we speak today and also moving, in this case, to the east as well, at east and maybe wiggling back a little bit there. That's just one representative station, but if we were to bring up the USGS map where these blue stars indicate these GPS stations, this is the one we just showed you at Makai Makapuhi. But if you see the one just north of there at MMAU is also showing signals, as is the one north of that, all these in this area right around Makapui Crater. And here's an NUPM station also showing significant movement. The signals aren't quite as large, but if you go further to the east, to near Nepal Crater, right through here, you also can see signals on those stations as well, including perhaps a little bit of upward signal here. So when we start seeing upward signals on these on-rift GPS stations, that raises a possibility that magma is actually moving into these areas of the rift. It's doing so with less earthquakes because it's being fed not by the pressure from the magma chamber flushing everything through, but rather by, think of it as gravity redistributing the magma within this blade in here to spread out right, the gravity and the pressure of the area and pressure wanting to migrate to where there's less pressure laterally. So that is, as far as we're seeing, this effect of ground motion. But this is true all the way down to the, the coastline as well. You can see the station all the way by Hole Pali by the coast, also moving very fast within the last week or so. So this effect is all happening uprift of Pu'o. Pu'o crater is here. And if we look at Pu'o itself, we do not see those signals. Maybe a little bit of adjustments, but Pu'o is still moving downwards at its regular pace. It has not changed in nearly two years, as has its southern so southward pace and its eastward pace, maybe slightly more so. So everything is, cons is uh, 
contained within this Middle East rift zone, uprift of Pu'o'o, meaning that there is no threat to people from this activity. This is all within Hawaii Volcanoes National Park, and any activity through here, an area the volcano prefers to erupt from, as you can see, the big scar of the Mauna Ulu eruption, and a big scar of the Pu'o'o eruption. This is normal for Kilauea, and this is not anything to be um, overly alarmed about, apart from the fact that we're now seeing the, the reactivation of the East Rift um, six years after the 2018 eruption. So that is Kilauea and the USGS at present in their update are stating that continuing earthquakes and ground deformation in the area between Mauna Ulu and Makaopui Crater, slightly down rift in the Middle East rift zone, likely reflect local adjustments due to changes in pressurization from the intrusion. This activity does not currently indicate intrusion growth via new magma being supplied from the summit. And in conclusion, additional swarms may occur with little or no warning and result in either intrusion of additional magma or eruption of lava. That last statement is fairly similar to what we've been living with for many months now, but this is the the explanation from the USGS here of how these local adjustments are not from new magma coming from the summit. So that is Kilauea, very quickly on Mauna Loa. Earthquakes have been at background levels there across Mauna Loa summit. Deformation cross caldera has continued extending as magma fills Mauna Loa below ground with maybe a little bit of extra scatter in the data perhaps suggesting some lateral adjustment in response to Kilauea over this past week. We'll have to wait to see if this data cleans up by the next week to draw further conclusions. On a short term, looking at Mauna Loa tilt, there is no obvious effect here. And so Mauna Loa continues filling, recovering from its 2022 eruption undisturbed. And that's our Hawaiian Volcano Summary for this week.